Hello everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man, and today we're looking at a game from the year 2009. It is from Madigat Games. It's a two to five player game, takes about 45 or so minutes to play. It is called Dice Town. Now in this game, there's different ways to score points. You can have the best poker hand, which you have these poker dice from nine to aces, but you also can score points along the way, depending on how many nines you have, tens, jacks, queens, and kings. And what's kind of cool is if you don't win anything, then you have Dr. Bad Luck at the end that can help you out and hopefully turn your luck around. So let's head on over to the gamers table where I'm going to show you how to play Dice Town. Alright everybody, here we are at the gaming table with Dice Town. Let's take a look and check it out. Okay, so here we go with the board. As you can see, we got the Old West right here. And what plays in the Old West? Poker. So you're going to have the board with the good old Old West uh, theme there. You have Everyone's going to get five of these poker dice, which have nine through ace on them. You also have a sheriff's card. You're going to have dollar bills, of course. you got to have the cold hard cash. You also have five dice shakers that you will use. You will start off with $3 in the bank. You have these gold nuggets that are sitting over here by the gold mine. You also have a general store that have cards. You also have a saloon, a sheriff, and also the town hall. This is where you get your land deeds, which we'll go ahead and put three to start off here. You're going to go ahead and place these like so. All right. And then you also have Doc Bad Luck over here. And what you'll do is you're going to flip over the top two cards here, just like so. And that is the setup. Everyone's going to start off with eight $1 bills. The youngest player will begin being the sheriff. And the bank starts off with $3 in the bank. All right. So in this game, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the most points at the end of the game. There's two ways to trigger the end of the game. is either when all the gold nuggets have been taken or... This draw pile of land deeds runs out. Okay, either one of those. Whatever, whatever happens first, the game immediately ends, everyone counts their points, and then whoever has the most points wins. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. First of all, actually, you got the instruction booklet too, which is a really, really cool instruction book. It's one of those real huge ones, and a lot of color illustrations, all that good stuff, explaining each and every one what these do, which I will go over right now. So every player is going to grab a cup. Go ahead and do a two player here. I'm going to go ahead and put these three away. That way, I can kind of generally show you how this works. Each player is going to grab five of these dice. All the dice are exactly the same. So, you don't have to look for five different kinds of dice or anything. They're all the same. So, every player is going to get five. Let's go ahead and grab five dice for player two over here. And we will begin. Oops. Oh, don't roll off. Okay, here we go. Five. All right. Youngest player gets the sheriff's badge. We'll just say player two is a sheriff. And let's begin. What you do on your turn is you're going to go ahead and shake the dice roller. And you're going to put it face down. Boom. So no one else sees what you roll. Now secretly what you're going to do is you're going to look under there and see what you have rolled. All right. So you can see I have nine. Now this, if you're not sure what these are, they have a, the denominations on the top here. See these are the nines, the tens, jack, queen, and king. And then... The ace, I'll go over what that uh, goes over as well. So you can see I have, I'm just going to kind of show you how this works, and then I'll go into detail what each one of these does. What you do on your turn <clears throat> is you're going to choose one die to keep. And once you do that, as you're secretly going to look, you're going to take whatever die you want, okay, and you're going to go ahead and leave it under there, and you're going to take the other four die and keep it under. Everyone's going to continually cover their die until everyone has chosen what die they want to keep. And then everyone raises, and that's one die that you get to keep. Then you're going to do it again. You're going to put the list of four there. You're going to shake it up and slam it, slam it down. You're going to choose one die to keep. Take all the rest of these out. Ever, after everyone has picked their die, then there we go. Okay, and so on. Now, if you have more than one die that you want to keep, let's just say you rolled a great hand. I have, let's just say I had two aces here. The aces are the spades. I wanted to keep more than just one on my turn. Well, you can. How you do that is for each die that you want to keep that you rolled, 
is going to cost you one dollar. Every time you pay, it goes into the stagecoach. So you put this right in here. So if I wanted to keep one more die, I would take these three out. And then once everyone chose their dice, you would raise it and you keep these two, you would pay one. If you wanted to keep two dice, then you, of course they would charge you $2 and put it in there. Okay, so every time you keep a die, it costs you a dollar. If you don't have any dollars on you, well, guess what? You're just kind of stuck with what you roll. Okay, that's pretty much how it works. As soon as a player, let's just say I rolled a heck of a hand, man. I just, you know, I got a full house here. Let's just say I had a full house. I am happy with the aces and queens here. Let's see if I, there we go. And say, okay, I finished. That's it. Okay. Everybody else, as soon as someone finishes their dice roll, because some people could finish earlier because they might keep more die than other people. One more roll. That's it. Say this player, you know, has three more dice to roll than whatever three that they roll. That's what they got to keep. There's only one final die roll after someone has completed all five of their dice. Only one more roll to everybody else and whatever they roll, that's what they have to keep. Okay. All right. So let's just say this is what we finished off with. Let's just say well, we'll do this. All right. We'll say this and this. All right. So each player has rolled their dice. Now, what you're going to look at is who has the best um, hand. I obviously have the best hand here. He's just got a couple pairs over here, so he has nothing going on in there. I have a full house. So what I get to do is I get to take the bottom deed card. This is a big one. This is four points here. This is pretty good because these are from one to five. So that's a pretty good card. I'm going to take this bottom card, okay, and place it face down in front of me. Now you'll know why this is face down a little bit later. But you get to take an additional card for each ace you have in your hand. Now, if I didn't have any aces, say I did something like this for a full house, I would only take the bottom card. That's it. If I had a roll where there was only maybe one ace, maybe I had like a four of a kind or something like that, then what I would do is I, would, I had the best hand, so I would take the bottom card. I have one ace, so I get to take one more card. That's how the best hand works is for every ace you have, you get to take an extra card. If you don't know the poker hands, on the back of this card, it does show you the different hands. You got a pair, two pair, three of a kind, and so on. So it kind of helps you what hand is better, okay? So in case you don't remember the poker hands, it does have it on the back of the deck, okay? So that is how the best hand works. You take the bottom card, and whatever points you get, and then you put it face down in front of you, you get an extra card for every ace you have in your best hand, okay? Then we're going to start with the Nuggets. <clears throat> Whoever has the most nines in their hand gets to have the Nuggets. And for each additional nine you have, you get to take one Nugget for each number you have. In this case, he has two nines. He has the most. He has two, so he gets to take two Nuggets. All right. Then you have the Bank. Whoever has the most tens will get to take the money from the Bank. We don't have any tens here. So we go ahead and ignore this. The general store, who has the most jacks? I don't have any jacks, but he has one jack. He has the most jacks. He has one here. So he gets to take one card and gets to keep it. And this, these general uh, store cards will actually give you little abilities you can do throughout the game. And it says, uh, play this card when you go to the general store. Go to the general store twice this round. So I would actually be able to, if I wanted to use this card, I could go a second time and get another card. Now, if you get multiples, let's just say you had, uh, uh, let's say, uh, what was this, uh, the jacks? If you had multiple jacks in here, you get to take one of each card, and you get to choose which one you want to keep, okay? But how many jacks you roll depends on how many cards you get to draw. And I say, okay, I want to keep this one. You keep put that face down in front of you, and of course, the other two go in the bottom of the stack here, Okay. So that's how the general store works. Whoever has the most jacks, you would actually choose however many jacks you have in your hand. That's how many cards you get to draw, and then you get to keep one. You get to choose which one you want. The saloon. The saloon is the queen's, and the queen likes to, well, she's all beautiful. Everyone, all the guys are distracted by her. And if you have the most queens, which in this case I do, I have two of them, 
I get to choose two cards from any player, all right, and I get to take one card, okay? So let's just say there's two queens here. I say, okay, player two, I want to look at whatever cards you have, okay? Now, right now, he only has, right now, player two only has one general store card, all right? So I would go ahead and give this card, he would give this card to me. Now, say they had multiple hands in their card. Let's just say, for instance, in this case, I had two general car store cards and I had three land deeds. Okay, what I would do is I would show them like this. I would show them like so, and they were able to get, since he has two queens, they would actually be able to choose any two of these cards, look at them, and then keep one of them. Okay, and that's how that works. Okay, so this person would take that card, I would keep these face down, and this person would take that card. All right, so that's how that works. Then you have the sheriff. He's the king. If you roll the most kings, you become sheriff. Now, what's good about the sheriff card is that there are any ties. So let's just say they had two nines. I had two nines. Uh oh, someone has to break the tie. Well, guess what? Whoever the sheriff gets to choose, whoever gets to, well, get that reward. Now, obviously, in this case, the sheriff would choose themselves. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to break the tie. I'm, it, this is mine. Now, if you have a three, four, or five player game and the sheriff is not involved in it, you are allowed to bribe the sheriff. Hey, sheriff, I'll give you three of my dollars if you uh, allow me to, you know, break the tie. Or, you know, I'll give you uh, a general store card. Or I'll, you know, you can, you can bribe. You can bribe the sheriff if, if need be uh, to be able to allow you to win that hand or that draw. Okay. So that's what the sheriff is. And then you have the town hall, which I already went over. This is what happens when you get the best hand. Then you have Doc Bad Luck way over on the right-hand side of the board. And what happens with him is if you did not win anything, if you didn't get any of these, you didn't get any gold nuggets, you didn't get any money from the bank, nothing. You didn't win anything. Then you get to choose one of these two cards and implement it. Sometimes these will help you in the game. Sometimes it allows you to take a card from a player, and there's, a, you know, there's all sorts of different cool things. Now, let's look at the two I drew here. Take the sheriff badge. You become the new sheriff. So now you are the new sheriff. You can choose that. Or we have a player of your choice must choose and give you one of their property deeds. So sometimes this doc bad, good is, uh, bad luck is not too bad there. And as soon as you take that card, you discard it, obviously. You replenish it. And then you go from there. So now let's go over. What happens when you take the money from the bank? I have not discussed that yet. Let's just say somebody rolled some tens. Now let's say I have the, the mess of the tens here. I would go ahead and take these $3 bills, place it in the bank here, or in your own you know, bank wad there. And any money that people have paid throughout the game to roll an extra die and so on, the money from the stagecoach goes up into the bank. Okay, so, then you, so this always replenishes from the stagecoach to the bank. And once the bank gets robbed, once you rob the bank, then the stagecoach goes ahead and puts their money in there, okay? Now, at the end of the game, let's go ahead and do the end scoring, okay? The end scoring goes as follows. And these are the ones where every two ones that you have, you get one point. So every $2 you have, it scores one point. For every gold nugget you have in your hand is one point. These deeds right here, that's the number that's shown. So if you had a four, you get a four points, you get three points, you get three points. If you end up with the sheriff's badge at the end of the game, that is five points. So that's not too shabby. If you have that sheriff's badge at the end of the game, you do score five points for that. And also in the scoring at the end of the game, don't forget your general store cards. Some of them say the end at the top, and these also give you victory points. Like this one has eight points. This has two, this has three. So don't forget to look in your prop, or the general store cards. Some of them will give you, not all of them do, only the ones say the end. These are scoring points at the end of the game as well. So make sure you add those to your final score. Now, one cool thing that is in the Doc Bad Luck that I want to kind of discuss is it's kind of important. One of the a couple of cards in here allow you to, let me see if I can find it. Here's one here. Place two property deeds from your hand face up in front of you. They can no longer be stolen from you. So you're pretty much able to flip two of these cards up, these property deeds that you want to keep. And once you flip these over, nobody can take them. 
So while they're face down, it's anybody's game. If I choose to steal a card, if I get the most queens, and I get to steal a card from you, and you have to go like this. But once you get this card here, or maybe the general store cards have some cards in there too that allow you to flip over your cards. If it is face up, they are locked. That is good for the rest of the game. So you're allowed to do that too. So these six points here that you have right here, you get to keep these no matter what. So when you bring up the cards, you are not taking those up. You're only bringing the face down cards. That's why you want these cards face down. And that is pretty much the game right there. Um, like I said, you're going to continue to roll these poker dice. Um, and, and every dice you want to keep, it costs you a dollar. Whoever has the best hand gets a D card. And of course, you got the nines, tens, jack, kings, and queens and kings. You do what it says here. And that, my friends, is the game. That is Dice Town. So let's head on over to the game room. And I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on Dice Town. You definitely need to get this game. Definitely need to get this game. This is definitely a thumbs up. I'm not even going to waste any time. I'm going straight through the thumbs up meter. Definitely need to get it. This is a great, wonderful game to play. It is a lot of fun. Especially when you get in the four and five player counts, it is a blast. And what's nice is everyone rolls their dice simultaneously. There is no, okay, your turn, your turn, your turn, your turn. I mean, you're pretty much, boom. Everyone's doing the same thing. As soon as all the dice are rolled, then everyone gets one more dice if anybody has any dice left over, and then you move on. That's pretty much how it is. It's really cool. Who has the most nines? Okay, you got two nines. Grab two gold nuggets. Okay, who has the most tens? Jacks, queens, kings. Great. I love the, the aces. If you have additional aces in your hand, you get to take more deed cards. That's great as well. I love the way you keep them face down. But a lot of times, you know, if you grab a five or a four or maybe even a three-pointer, everyone's going to remember that. So maybe they might use the queen or maybe get one of those general store cards or even a bad luck card, a dark bad luck card. So, oh, you can steal a card. Well, you remember who that person was that got that five-pointer or that four-pointer, and hopefully you'll end up getting it. Or you can just take the amount of cards that you're able to take, look and grab one, you're going after that five. So... You definitely have a target on your back when you grab one of those four or five land deeds, unless you're able to be lucky enough to turn around face up and lock it in so that's yours for the rest of the game and no one can steal that from you. So what a great game. I love it. It's different every single time you play it. So the replayability is through the roof. It's never going to be the same game twice, and that's what's fun about this game. I like the little dollar bills. I mean, they're pretty small. They're pretty small. I was going through them like, man, these things are really tiny. Um, and uh, but they can be they can bend really easily. So you kind of want to be careful with them. Make sure you don't bend them up because I, these you can easily bend. They're not very sturdy at all, but they're really cool looking. They're really a lot of fun. So so if you can find this game, definitely go ahead and get it. I found this at uh, McKay's, of course. I used some of my credits. I think it was about twenty or twenty five bucks, twenty three somewhere around there. I bought it where I got it for. Totally worth the money. Definitely get it. Let me know if you have the game or if you don't have the game. Um, let me know. I always love hearing whether you have it and enjoy it, don't like it, whatever. Or maybe you've seen my video, you don't have it, and now you want to get it. Those are my favorite comments right there. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. And as always, happy gaming.